Hey everybody, so these videos are going to be short. Um, we'll probably tackle this stuff again. I've been battling a chest cold for like the last three weeks, so I'm short on breath. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll try to get into this. This is some of the stuff that I've seen while I was uh, taking a little break from everything. I was uh, going over the name of Shem, right? Because we've seen that Ham is it Ham. If you go back to the uh, the uh, Catholic version, that Doreen Bible, and even the Septuagint, they don't say Ham; it says Cham. And uh, you can pull literally pull up old, you know the pages for Cham, and it's your you know Asian looking people that they in, you know credit to being Cham, you know. And, uh, you know, what is it, Jafet? We know there's no J, you know, so I was wondering if there was something like that that they might have done with the name Shem, if Shem wasn't actually what it was, because I wanted to look it up in uh, legal terms to see what the legal definition of Shem was, you know, because uh, I've just been, you know, going over stuff, you know, and I've seen that uh, literally they want you to go through a two year process at two-year process at uh, being the shortest of the term you can uh, convert to Judaism, which I'm not doing that. I was just looking into this because, you know, when I was looking into the whole uh, was it nationality of the Moors, you know, I, I finally had someone show me that, you know, one of the ways that they uh, obtained their nationality as the Moors, they went to the Moorish Science Temple. They, uh, you know, showed their interest in wanting to change you know, their nationality to a Moor. There was a date and time set that they would do this. Upon that, they announced their new Moorish name with everybody in the uh, congregation as their witness, dropping their, you know, you know, their their slave name, the name that's not theirs. And by doing that, um, they obtained their new Moorish name and their newish new Moorish nationality, and they were given their uh, Moorish nationality card. And I just thought that was uh, interesting that they could, this person finally broke it down to a layman's simple term for me. Um, I'm not saying you know it was it's the way it's always done, but I just thought that was interesting that you know this person was like, yeah, this is how they did this um, for them. And as I was thinking about it, I'm like, the same comparison was to uh, the Christians because that's what I've witnessed my whole entire life. They want to get you into the Christian church. They want you to become a member. You know. If you're not, they won't let you. Can't participate. I mean, you can participate, but you can't participate in the changes that go on within the church and so on and so forth. So they're always trying to get you to become a member. If not, you're just like sitting on the outside watching them do everything, and and it's uh you know weird, whatever, whatnot. So I was looking into Judaism, and they have their own thing where they want you to have a what they call a sponsoring rabbi that meets with you uh, multiple times a week. Uh, shows you the proper way and their idea, you know, their proper way of absorbing the, not absorbing, not it, observing the customs of Judaism. And uh, like I said, I, I'm not trying to do that because I remember Judaism, you know, it, it, it's for these, you know, people, these, these, uh, the, the Jewish, you know, ish meaning to be like. You're not the Jew, but you want to be like the Jew. So you're the Jewish. You know, and, and what, that's not what I'm trying to do. I, I have a covenant with the uh, Creator that I'm trying to establish again, and trying to get back to. I, I'm not trying to do all that stuff, but I was thinking it was interesting because, um, they, yeah, they have like a two-year process they want you to go through. Uh, that's if you're showing signs that you're, you know, picking up what they're teaching in two years, and uh, after that, you know, the whole custom of circumcision, so on and so forth, and then. Uh, uh, if you haven't done it, and then that was what was the other thing? You know, the gentleman mentioned, um, oh yeah. Uh, after that, then they'll come before each other, and, and you'll um, have your finger pricked, and you'll you'll you know use your blood um, on a document, and uh, you'll be baptized, and you know uh, next thing you know you're a Jew, and it's a legal process, and uh, you know you can take the paperwork to your job and all that stuff, and get the Jewish days off and things like that. <laughs> But, um, so I was just going through this stuff, you know, questioning things. And I was like, you know, what's the legal, you know, definition for Shem? 
What is what is shemetic in in legal terms? You know, uh, what was the other thing I was thinking about? Oh, what is well when when I claim I am you know Afro Asiatic, you know, and, and I was wondering what what do they have on the books on that? So you know these are different things that you know I was looking into while my time off. And um, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> um, but I, I started back at the Jewish Encyclopedia, you know, going over Shem. And uh, the different ways that the name Shem was being used. Uh, I was reading where Shem was uh, the name of the book of Exodus. That uh, Shem is also the root word for, uh, how do you say name in Hebrew? Like, uh, you know, when uh, someone would ask you your name, you know, you would, you know, they would ask you Shem, whatever, whatever, and then your name. So, you know, I was just going over that stuff. And, you know, of course, one thing led to another, and I... Ended up reading about uh, Babylon because you know I don't know why, but that popped in my head. So I wanted to see what the Jewish like, had to say about it. And this this place stood out to me. Uh, Dori. It was a, a fortified city built by Rehoboam in Judah, uh, now called Dorim. You see that. And what stood out to me was this, right? Mm. This city, let's see here. A valley mentioned in Daniel. This was another one here. Dorm was a valley mentioned in the book of Daniel. Here in Nebuchadnezzar set up a golden image. And that's probably that statue that we read about. What I thought was interesting that it was mentioned in the land of Babylon, one of these places, places east of Babylon. Yeah, see here? There it is. Highlight the wrong section. Three places in Babylon called Durham. And I thought that was interesting. Because you have uh, a place where the Israelites build one, and you have now the Babylonians building, what did it say, three places with this name. And it was supposed to be walls, walled cities for both of them. Walls surrounding a city. And it's in the Septuagint. And this is, so I went to search for it, and this is what I found. I found one here. Um, this is mentioned here, and it's mentioned in South Africa, uh, Dorm, Africa. Let's see. There we go. It's among many cities in Rome, Rome's Providence. Let's see there. Now the where this place was, they call it Tarshish. Yeah, but the destin destined to fade so completely that the precise location is unknown. And I thought that was interesting that it went there and We'll see if I can find the one that they I was reading about that was mentioned. Uh, it's an, another one in South Africa. I, mean, I don't, I can't find it, but I'm not going to spend all the time searching for it. I'll find it and, and bring it back up in another one. Let's see here. This is the one that they mentioned, as you read about in the land of uh, Judah. I read here this whole, I leave a section here talking about it. But uh, I was just searching around to see if there was other places around the world with that name. And I found one I thought was interesting here. El Dora, Doran. In Mexico, 
Uh-huh. And I thought that was interesting. I'm like, is this the one that Judah built, or the Rehoboam built? And there it is, El Durango, that's what they called it down there. For the Weather Channel. I know, it's a stretch. I, I do. I, I get it. But uh, here it is. It was El Durango, and it's the uh, free and so sovereign state of El Durango. Uh, it's named after the first king, they said, of Mexico. I really don't know why, but every time I see this, I think of uh, the tribe of Nathali. I really do. I don't know why, but I just think of the tribe of Nathali when I see, I see these, this mention of these, uh, this Aztec group. But I'm going to stop here. I, uh, I hope this leads to somewhere eventually, but like I said, this is just some stuff I was reading, and uh, I'm going to put it together. But uh, that's all for now on this one.